Welcome everyone to the Intel Network Builders webinar program. This is Bree Hilliard, Webinar Program Manager for Intel Network Builders and your host for today's webinar. Thank you for taking the time to join us today for our presentation titled Elevate Your Infrastructure Using Airship. Before we get started, I want to point out some of the features of the Bright Talk tool that may improve your experience. There is a questions tab below your viewer. I encourage our live audience to please ask questions at any time. Our presenters will hold answering them until the end of the presentation. Below your viewing screen, you will also find an Attachments tab with additional documentation and reference materials, including a number of websites and documents mentioned in this presentation. Finally, at the end of the presentation, please take time to provide feedback using the Rating tab. We value your thoughts and will use the information to improve our future webinars. Intel Network Builders webinar series takes place live every week, so check the channel to see what is upcoming and access our growing library of recorded content. In addition to the resources you see here, we also offer a comprehensive NFB and SDN training program through Intel Network Builders University. You can find this program at networkbuilders.intel.com forward slash university. Today, we are pleased to welcome Matt McEwen, Principal MTS at AT&T and Airship Core Reviewer, and Evgeny Lee, Senior Software Engineer at Marantis and Airship Core Reviewer. Matt is a cloud engineer living in St. Louis, Missouri. He's participated in a number of OpenStack-related efforts in the community. He integrates this work within AT&T as part of its network cloud platform. He has been working in the OpenStack community for about three and a half years, first in a supervisory capacity for AT&T, onboarding, mentoring, and guiding engineers as they get involved in open development for the first time and more recently, hands-on as an engineer and core reviewer of the OpenStack Helm and Airship projects. He's a former PTL of OpenStack Helm. Evgeny is a senior software engineer at Marantis and core contributor to Airship. Previously, he was a core contributor to OpenStack Fuel. He lives in California. Welcome, Matt and Evgeny, and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Now, I will hand it over to Nick Chase, head of content for Marantis, to start off. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are going to get moving, but uh, before we get started, just a quick note about what we're going to do so that you know what's coming on. So Matt is going to give us a view of Airship and what it is and why that's important and how it works, just, just to kind of give you a level set of what it's for. And then we're going to go on, and Evgeny is going to give us uh, not just one, but two demos. He's going to start with a demo of a simplified version of Airship and OpenStack together, and then, uh, and then a more complicated version, a more powerful and flexible version of how to deploy Airship and then uh, use that for OpenStack. So uh, at the end of the day, you'll have a good example, a good understanding of what Airship is, how it works, how to use it yourself, and how to get started with it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Matt, go ahead and take it away. Hey, thanks, Nick. Uh, and also thank you, Bree, for uh, having Evgeny and myself here to speak. Um, happy to be with you guys and appreciate everyone uh, coming to join us today. So first, a little bit about the Airship project, um, what it is and what it does. Uh, Airship is a fully open source project. Uh, and it is designed, it's a platform uh, and a software stack that's designed to be able to provision your infrastructure, provision any kind of cloud infrastructure uh, very flexibly and repeatably and declaratively. So here you sort of see a graphic that lays out a little bit of that. In the left column there, uh, you see the inputs to Airship. You have a collection of uh, YAML files and uh, definitions of your site that uh, typically live in a Git repository, one or more Git repositories. And those YAMLs define things like uh, Helm charts, definitions and references, uh, bare metal machine information, uh, policies, uh, security policies, both from a networking perspective and a role-based access perspective uh, for your infrastructure, and uh, networking information. And then you take all of those YAML files and you feed them through a single front door API uh, that Airship gives to you. And then Airship takes care of all of the steps 
needed to take you soup to nuts from you know, freshly racked and stacked infrastructure, hardware, through a fully functional cloud ready to run workloads on it. So the bare metal provisioning, the in, uh, deployment of uh, a Kubernetes cluster, a, uh, typically an OpenStack cluster on top of that with a full LMA stack logging and monitoring and alerting, um, also that you can uh, be able to do all of this once through a repeatable way. And Airship was engineered not just for deploying infrastructure, because deploying is a one-time thing that is typically easier to get right. The, the real important part of this lifecycle management is the, is the ability to update your site and lifecycle manage your site through that same front door API. So if you want to make a change to uh, your running site, all you do is you make a change in your Git repository to one of those YAML files, one or more of them, and then you feed the whole lot of them back through that front door API, uh, which we call Shipyard. And then Airship, working with Kubernetes and Helm and other tooling, uh, figures out how to realize that declarative definition of what you want to see deployed. And Evgeny is going to show uh, a description or an example of that uh, here in a bit. So Airship, uh, from a design perspective, uh, is really about um, resiliency and repeatability, shifting things left. Uh, and here you see some of its, its key tenets that we had uh, taken into account when, uh, when building it. Uh, you know, many of the folks working on Airship have done OpenStack deployments many different ways for a long time, and we have seen the good and the bad and the ugly. We wanted to do it right this time, and we wanted to be able to scale this out to a large number of sites. So use cases like edge computing, for example, uh, and other similar cases where you want to have a lot of sites. It's not just about two or three very large sites that maybe you can uh, treat like, uh, like pets. You need to have, in our use cases, a lot of sites that you can treat like cattle and be able to push them out, provision them, update them, and reprovision them when necessary uh, with just a push of a button and take the guesswork out. So shifting things to the left from a testing perspective, from a validation perspective, from a site authoring perspective, and a defining your sites once and then being able to stamp them out many times, that's really what Airship uh, is geared toward. But you can also use it for you know, single sites and labs and things like that as well. Uh, Airship is a fully container-based platform. We use uh, containers uh, for everything. We use Helm as our uh, single deployment strategy uh, for getting containers into the Kubernetes cluster. And uh, that drives consistency and repeatability and allows for Kubernetes to do things like a um, resilient handling of our workloads so that we can you know, use Kubernetes for all it's worth and be able to manage our OpenStack server, uh, services uh, in a resilient way. It's also a very flexible platform. Uh, OpenStack is our first major use case for it, uh, but it can be used for all kinds of different workloads. OpenStack just happens to be the Helm-based uh, software that we deploy on top of the stack in um, our initial uh, use cases for this. But we also have other site types that we run CICD in uh, without OpenStack. We run artifact repositories. Uh, we really use Airship. Um, we dog food quite a bit with Airship and uh, use it to host the services that go into making Airship uh, development work. Uh, Airship also, because it's a declarative uh, a declarative approach where you can uh, say up front in your YAMLs what you want your site to look like. It makes it really easy to take advantage of um, advanced infrastructure capabilities. Uh, some of the things that uh, Intel uh, products, for example, um, can support, things like SRIOV and huge pages and CPU pinning, uh, things that uh, as operators we really need to leverage to get the most out of our hardware uh, and the most uh, into our applications. Uh, by, able, by being able to just turn those on in our one source of truth, it makes it easy to configure those things. Uh, and then also uh, OVS DPDK. This is actually an area that uh, Intel engineers are working in the Airship community today to add support. Uh, so that will be coming soon. So 
Airship did not come out of uh, out of nowhere uh, for you here today. Uh, it has quite a bit of history. We've been working on the underpinnings of it in various forms for about three years. Um, first, uh, we built uh, many of the same folks involved in Airship. Uh, first, worked on the uh, the OpenStack Helm project, which is an official OpenStack project, and uh, which stands alone with or without Airship, um, but follows some of the same design guidelines, like a declarative approach and a, a Helm-based uh, workflow. Uh, and after we uh, cut our teeth on understanding how to uh, accomplish that, uh, we introduced Airship as a pilot project uh, into the OpenStack Foundation. And uh, that's currently the status of Airship. We're working toward our 1.0 release. Uh, and the plan is for that 1.0 release to be uh, reached by the Denver Open Infra Summit, uh, which is in about uh, less than a month now, a couple weeks away, to be, uh, to be honest. Sneaks up on you. Uh, what Airship supports now uh, is orchestration with batteries included, meaning you can take it, you can use defaults, you can deploy it to your sites without too much monkeying around with it. Uh, although Airship allows you to fully customize and configure all the components that go into it, uh, we go to great lengths to have uh, a few sort of reference default architectures that you can just start from uh, and get a lab up and running um, either on bare metal or uh, on your laptop. Uh, and then you can customize from there. It's always easier to iterate on that after you have an actual site up and running. Uh, we've been focusing quite a bit on security. Security is very near and dear to our hearts. So that's been where uh, a lot of um, hardening and and best practices adoption and taking advantage of the, the latest security features offered by Kubernetes and Calico and things like that um, where our effort has gone. Uh, we're also adding uh, multi-OS support. Uh, that has been an active, um, an active uh, area of development recently. Um, and just streamlining the onboarding experience. Because you know, when you put all your configuration for your entire platform in one set of YAMLs, it can be a a, a little bit of a complex set of YAMLs to get started with. So we've been trying through, uh, through documentation and through examples and through uh, a lot of comments and references uh, to make that a, a quite a bit easier than it used to be to get started um, and understand how these different uh, configurations fit together to drive uh, your cloud deployment. And so Airship really focuses on taking sort of the, the boring parts of cloud uh, deployment and operations, if you will, and making them rock solid. Um, things like uh, just the day-to-day -day things like uh, doing installations, doing of new software, doing deployments of new sites, doing upgrades, security patches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are what Airship is designed to make easy so that you can do cool things on top of it. You know, we don't, we don't want to spend our time there. We want to develop this solution airship up front and then spend our time doing other interesting things on top of that platform, right? So things like edge computing that I mentioned before, that's a big driver for this work. Um, things like hybrid cloud and uh, continuous delivery, being able to uh, push changes out to labs and production um, with the push of a button, with a high degree of, of validation of, of different configurations. That's, that's really what we're after here. And, and self-healing infrastructure is another major point of this. Um, it's not, you know, when you're taking your eyes, when you're taking your, uh, your operational um, folks and you, you want them to be able to manage more sites, um, it's not just about being able to deploy more sites. Um, it's also about being able to operate and watch more sites at the same time and for those sites to be able to take care of themselves and to report, uh, report fault conditions back, uh, back out when, uh, when necessary for a human to get involved. So as you can see, here are just a, it's a subset really of the, the folks that have, been, uh, that have been contributing to Airship in the community so far. Uh, this, uh, this list is growing every day, and it's, honestly, it's grown quite a bit since this slide was created. So it's a, it's a healthy um, uh, community that uh, 
we'd love to we'd love to welcome more folks into. So if you're if any of this catches your attention and you'd be interested as an operator or as a developer, um, we'd love to uh, we'd love to uh, to talk with you and um, get you uh, working in our community. Okay. All right, and with that, I will hand it off to Evgeny for the uh, the interesting part. Okay, so Evgeny, give us a give us a heads up on on what we're going to see. Yeah, thanks, uh, Matt, Nick. Um, hello, everyone. So uh, today I'm going to show you two demos. Uh, first demo will be a ship in a bottle installation. A ship in a bottle is a, a single node a ship installation that we usually use for demos and for de the development environment. Uh, but uh, this installation doesn't require too much resources, so you can run it in a VM. And uh, I will just show how to get it up and running and how, how, what installation process looks like. Second part of the demo will be about Airship Treasure Map. Airship Treasure Map is our reference architecture for bare deployment. And the question which we get asked quite often is, um, after you get your Airship installation up and running, how do you apply changes um, to, the, to your environment? And um, I'm going to show you a couple of configuration changes and what, um, what it looks like to apply the changes on your cluster. Um, let's um, first start with a um, demo of um, a ship in a bottle installation. And uh, here I have a VM, uh, and I'll just uh, log in into that. And now we go to um, a ship in a bottle repository on, on a GitHub. And um, this repository is located in, um, in OpenStack organization, as you can see here. So um, in, in, on, on the main page, um, you will see uh, the requirements for your VM. Um, it, it requires um, Ubuntu 16.04, 6 CPUs, 20 gigs of RAM, and 32 gigabytes of disk space. And there is an instruction how to um, how to run it. So after you log in into your VM, you should first switch to root, and then create some directory, um, clone or ship um, in a bottle repository, and then um, go to manifest dev single node um, repository. And in this the directory, in this directory, you will find um, a script that you should run to get the installation started. So first, um, it asks to confirm uh, the interface which will be used to access um, to your installation, and we just need to confirm that. And after that, um, it will start the installation, uh, the process of uh, bootstrapping your VM, and then it will start the installation of, of Kubernetes cluster. And it will fast forward that because it takes more than an hour to get executed, depending on your um, available resources for your VM. So some images, and then it, it um, should start an um, installation of Kubernetes. And here we can see in kubesystem um, namespace there are quite a few containers related to Kubernetes that are started, uh, such as Calico, uh, Kubernetes Proxy, TCD, Scheduler. So after some time, um, it, after, Kuberne after Kubernetes um, is up and running, it will start uh, the deployment of Airship Control Plane, and you can see that it's the Airship Control Plane is installed in UCP namespace. So there are a lot of services related to managing your um, installation, such as Dangle for managing your hardware card, card, uh, configuration, and there is um, MAS for bare metal installation. Um, also, there is Keystone specific for Airship for authentication. So, and after this is done, um, there will be a second stage which is going to install OpenStack on top of on top of your Kubernetes cluster using Airship. So this is the second stage, and um, it uploads um, the configuration into Airship, and then it 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 is going to trigger a deployment. And usually, uh, what, what I like doing is opening a second uh, console, 
during this stage and run kubectl um, get pods in all main spaces and dash w flag shows us any changes that are um, that are going on, on on Kubernetes cluster. Like if there are new pods are started to just going to show in live mode uh, what what are the states of the pods. So and uh, we can see that uh, there are quite a few OpenStack pods already running. There are hit pods already started and uh, and we can see installation of glances in process. After that, it starts Nova and Neutron. And after some time, uh, it should start um, Nova and Neutron test to to check that um, these services work correctly. And um, after some time, uh, there will be a um, a successful deployment of all the uh, all of all of these pages, and at the end it is going to start a hit tag uh, to spawn a VM in, in your um, OpenStack cluster, which is run on top of Kubernetes. So here is um, our hit tag, and you can see that it started a, a VM. And at the end, you also can see um, some useful information um, about available endpoints, where to get credentials, and all the things that are needed for you to uh, to access your um, OpenStack cluster. So there will be a script run OpenStackCLI.sh. Uh, it is basically a wrapper to allow you to uh, to uh, to access your OpenStack environment using CLI. So and uh, it should be available in the directory from which you run your shipping a bottle. It will be available from there, and you can see that now we can start it using. Uh, we can list um, available VMs using this script, and here we have an output. And this VM has a um, floating IP available, and uh, we are going to try to log into that. It's a serious image, so you use standard credentials for that. All right. And uh, when we log into the VM, uh, we can see um, there is um, interface, and uh, this VM has a single CPU, and also um, this VM has uh, internet connectivity. So we can ping uh, Google DNS. So th that is it for uh, airship in a uh, in a bottle representation. Uh, Basically, we went left after we finished the deployment of our ship in a bottle, we got our OpenStack cluster up and running, and then we see that we have a VM uh, on top of it, and we can access the VM and um, and see what is inside. So, second presentation will be about our ship treasure map, treasure map. and um, this I said earlier, it's, um, it will be a bar metal installation and um, First, I log in into the controller, and uh, I'm going to show you that um, we have six bare metal services available. So, first three services, uh, first three servers are controllers, and uh, we can try running OpenStack hypervisor release, which would show us available compute. So we can see that. Um, Three last servers are basically computes. So, um, what I'm going, what changes I'm going to apply to this cluster? Um, first change will be related to Keystone configuration. We want um, uh, sometimes when we troubleshoot some problems on, on the environment, we want to get a bit more debugging information about for specific services, for example, for Keystone. And here I will, I'm going to show you how to um, how to change um, configuration for 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 your um, for your uh, cluster, and uh, second part will be about um, promenade. Uh, will be about um, updating of updating of image for your uh, for your running service. In this case, we will use, we will update an image for promenade. Promenade is a airship specific service that we use to that helps you to. Uh, manage your Kubernetes cluster, and we are going to do an update of image for this service. So first, let's check um, the logs for um, Keystone and see uh, 
what, what is blowing in Paleo right now there. So we run, um, we use kubectl to access the, lo the logs and um, we can see that there are a lot of info logs, info level logs available and some warning logs. So um, we can see that there is not, no really debugging related logs um, in this output. Now we are going to look into promenade, um, can promenade port and we will see what is the version of image that um, that it runs. So um, we are not here is an image for promenade. We are not, not going to memorize like entire hash. So we will just remember that it starts with 12 and ends with 14. So um, now we are going to um, to go to uh, the directory where we store all our um, configuration files for this um, for this environment. Um, the, this environment uses standard um, Airship Treasure Map um, Airship Treasure Map uh, configuration, which you can find also on on GitHub. So you will be able to like to, to see what what is there um, by accessing the repository. And uh, we just go into this directory, and uh, we are going to do all the changes here. So, for Keystone, we are going to do a site level configuration, and for uh, for Prominate image, we are going to do a, uh, a change for in, in global layer. What it means um, in 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 Airship, there is a layering mechanism that allows you to define some defaults for your uh, for a set of clusters that we call we call global. So there we, we basically store defaults, and then we can override um, some parameters in, in this uh, um, in this manifest you, on a, on a site level. For for example, for this specific cluster, we want to have a keystone with debugging with uh, logging level debug, and these changes will be only related to this specific cluster and will not affect any other clusters. And for Prominate image, we are going to do it in global, so it would affect all the environments that depend on this um, global configuration. So first we, we, we will uh, try to find where a um, keystone manifests are defined, so we, we just um, list available um, directories in global. And we can see uh, there is a global directory, and then we will go to, uh, we will need to go to software, charts, Charts is a directory, directory where all charts are uh, Helm charts are defined, and then we can see that there is um, OpenStack OSH, which is which stands for OpenStack Helm, and it has all like, OpenStack related services defined. So here we can see that there is OpenStack Keystone directory, um, and there is a manifest that we want to redefine. So um, first thing that I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create um, a directory for this specific site to be able to override um, OpenStack Keystone. And um, I do it uh, by creating a directory in site-specific configuration uh, directory, which is site Airship Steve Airship Steve is the name of, the, of this specific uh, installation. And uh, we created the directory, and then I will copy an existing override for um, for Nova, uh, with Tech Nova, and I will edit a few things there, um, and we'll adopt it for to be to become um, a Keystone override. It is just to save a bit of time. Um, so I just copy this manifest. All right, and then I will just open it, and um, I will remove unneeded comments. And I will replace Nova with uh, Keystone. All right, Keystone. And um, we can see there is. Uh, so this is um, a description of the of override. It has quite a few important parameters. There is the data section. The data section is basically a structure that will be merged with, with a parent in this. Um, when we add parameters here, it would allow us to recursively overwrite anything that, uh, that, defined, that is defined in global. Also, there is a parent selector, um, parent selector parameter. Uh, it allows us to, uh, to find and to specify a 
specific um, manifest that we want to uh, override. In this case, it would be Keystone Global. So and, uh, let's now go uh, to the parent manifest, which we want to override and see what its structure looks like. Right, we just use script to find it. And now we can see that there is in the OSH directory, directory there is a uh, Keystone manifest defined. And we can see that it has a uh, label Keystone Global. This is um, what we need. So there are quite a few, few parameters defined there, uh, such as endpoints, some passwords, and uh, yes, some, some, some secrets. And, uh, we are interested, um, as of now, we are interested in data section and um, values subtree. Values subtree is um, what is used to, um, to basically pass, pass to uh, Helm charts to be able to um, write some default parameters for Helm chart. So here we have a conf section and under, the, under the, the, that section we have logging and we are interested in logger keystone, we are not going to I redefine all the um, logging information. We are interested only in logger keystone. And we can see that it has level info. And we are going to um, just copy it and um, and paste it in um, into our override. Mm -hmm. So it should go under the section values. And we will, remove, uh, we will remove unneeded overrides and only leave logger keystone. We don't have to specify all the parameters and because we want to I write only um, logger keystone. So we change info level to debug. And then uh, we will also need to add um, additional flag, replacement flag, which would, um, which, which would allow us to tell to Airship that we want to, do a, to redefine a, a amazing request and launch to create a new one. And um, all right. This is it for um, Keystone reconfiguration. Now we want to uh, update Prominate image. And all the versions of all charts and images are stored in versions.yaml, so let me find that. It is defined in globals, and um, we want to find in this file um, our Prominate image. So um, here is Prominate image, and because you can see it starts with 12 and ends with 14. This is exactly what we have running um, on the environment. What we will do now, we will take um, a, a path to repository where this, from, from which this um, image is taken, and we will see what Im available images are there. So we'll just go onto this website, and we see that there is um, our current image, which starts with 12 and ends with 14. And for this demo, we will take a day-old image, and uh, we will use it um, as a new as a new image for update. So we will just paste it here, remove all the one, and we are done for image update. So now we will need to prepare our manifest and our configuration for um, to be able to um, to push into our ship. For that, we first we want to verify that these manifests are um, correct, and there are some there is a peglek command. Peglek is a ship specific um, tool that allows you to manage your manifest. It allows to do your linting. It allows you to do encryption of your secrets, and uh, and such kind of things, and I'm going to run link command on this um, on this manifest, and also I specify some um, exclude some checks that I, I know that are not important for this site, like clear checks passwords and uh, things like that. And I'm going to just keep these um, checks. So I'm, I'm going to run it. Uh, it will take some time to finish. All right, um, as you can see, there are no errors. So we are ready to um, run peglek collect. Peglek collect, um, what it does, is, uh, it takes all related to this specific site manifest, and then it, it uh, collects them into um, an airship consumable format. 
uh, there will be a few file, files collected and uh, we'll be able to, to push that into Airship and start the deployment after that. So we run collect and uh, and uh, important thing here is uh, we specify a directory where, where this manifest will be, where, where this collected manifest will be stored. So this is collected directory. So um, this is done, and now we will check that all the parameters that we updated are in, in this um, collected Airship-Treasure map that um, file. And in this file, we will be able to see all the manifests that are related to this, to this site. We can see that uh, there is a, an updated image for Promenade, and, now, and also we will check that there is an updated configuration for, uh, for Keystone, and we will need to find it now. So here it is. We can see that there is an override that we created earlier. Uh, and now and it has a yes our it has level debug and now we can um, now we can upload all our manifests into airship. We specify um, a site name and we specify a directory which is which you to use for upload and then um, it's going to start uploading the manifest. It will take some time, so we'll fast forward because it's going. At first, it's going to do a validation, and uh, then it will uh, commit uh, um, the configs to make sure that um, to, to to make sure that we don't change it them later. So here we can see that uh, there are no errors, and um, we can use uh, a ship shipyard which is in tools directory to start the update process. So we uh, changed the configuration files, we uh, verified that they are correct, we uploaded them into our uh, into Airship, and now we can start the update process. So for that, we use update software script. All right, um, so, and um, it is going to um, start the deployment process, and I will fast forward there, here. And um, also, I think as for um, I, as I did for I ship in a bottle, I also do it here. Um, I run kipctl and uh, get posts in all name spaces and uh, dash w flag to um, look what what exactly is going on on, on the on Kubernetes cluster. So we can see that all this um, all these posts we are already running on the cluster, and now. After a few moments, you will see that it, starts, it restarts Promenade pod because we updated an image, so this is expected. And now it starts test to scientific check, scientific check that it works uh, correctly, and now it starts up the update procedure for Keystone related pods. And at the end, it's going to start a test again to verify that everything is fine. So, and at the end, we'll have a message that, that uh, says us that everything was uh, successfully completed. And yeah, here it is, successfully performed update software. So now what we are going to do, we are going to verify that all our changes were applied and we actually can see a bit more information, for example, for Keystone. Uh, we check the, the pod name and we run um, CTL logs common to get the logs for this um, for this service. And um, now we can see that there are quite a few debug logs available, such as middleware, middleware uh, some middleware context, uh, some Fernet related logs, and um, a bit more information which may help you with the debugging. And also we'll check a promenade image and that it was updated with uh, KPCL describe comments for that, and we can see that um, the image now not, doesn't start with 12 and ends um, on 14, and it's actually an updated image. So that is all I wanted to show you today, um, and back to you, Matt. Hey, thank you, Evgeny. All right, so that was a really good demo of uh, where Airship is today. Uh, and sort of proof that um, you know 
it, it's a real thing. It actually works, right? Um, but it's not the end of the story. And so I wanted to really quickly go over some of the things that we have planned next uh, for Airship. There we go. Um, so we're shooting for, the one, for our 1.0 release uh, with an emphasis on production readiness uh, by the Denver Summit, like I mentioned. And following that, uh, we have a, a lot of things we want to get to. Uh, and these are, these are just some of them. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we're really eager to adopt the ironic uh, bare metal provisioning tooling, which is part of OpenStack already. Uh, we uh, use the MAS provisioner today. And uh, when we created this, uh, this platform uh, originally, uh, we, we, want, we knew we wanted to declaratively say what our hardware should look like. And so we created an Airship component that would, uh, that would do that for us, that would interpret a YAML manifest and then uh, declaratively drive MAS. Well, a couple things have happened in the meantime. Uh, we have, uh, we've decided that we want to adopt Ironic. Um, and then in the, uh, also, uh, the Kubernetes cluster API has come to be. And, and that is also a sort of a, a broad uh, a broadly adopted yet nascent uh, API within uh, Kubernetes that will declaratively drive infrastructure provisioning for Kubernetes clusters, which is exactly what we need. So we hope to uh, make that our the next generation um, piece of our airship provisioning. Um, and we are planning on um, working with the MetalCube project, uh, which has already gotten a head start on this, uh, this already. And so the Airship community is working closely with them. Uh, sort of in a, a similar uh, way, we created, uh, you know, when we created Airship, there wasn't a, a fully highly available uh, industry standard uh, Kubernetes deployer that uh, fit our needs. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, KubeADM has gained a lot of traction and, and has really become the de facto uh, Kubernetes installation mechanism. And so we would, again, we want to adhere to um, the best in the uh, best of breed in the Kubernetes space. And so we plan to adopt KubeADM as well uh, and drive that declaratively uh, through Airship manifests. Uh, what else here is, uh, should I call out um, Argo for workflow management? Um, we currently use uh, Shipyard as our component that declaratively drives workflows, and that uses the Apache Airflow project to actually execute our, our directed graphs. Um, in the meantime, uh, Argo has gotten a lot, of, uh, a lot of momentum behind it as a cloud-native workflow uh, solutioner, or solution. So we're looking at uh, incorporating Argo in at a few different points uh, in Airship. And uh, that is an area that we plan to uh, do a lot of um, design and, and thinking about. Uh, potentially, uh, it would uh, take the place of Airflow today. Um, and then again, I mentioned edge use cases. That is on the horizon for us as well. It's not where we're starting. It's not our initial use case, but it's definitely one of our top ones down the road. Uh, and then I mentioned we're a uh, we are a pilot project within the Open Infrastructure uh, Foundation, and we plan to work toward graduation as a top-level uh, Open Infra project. That's uh, something where uh, we want to work very hard toward. So next, uh, I'd like to invite you, uh, if, if any of this piques your interest, uh, if you are coming to the Open Infrastructure Summit in Denver, um, please uh, come say hi. Uh, we have quite a few different talks uh, around airship and related topics. Uh, these are just a selection of them. There are more. Um, and if you're not able to come, uh, many of these will be recorded as well. So um, following the summit um, later on in, uh, in May, they usually get posted pretty quick, actually. Um, I would invite you to just uh, look on the, the OpenStack Foundation's website uh, for links and, and search for, for Airship there. So now we have um, a little bit of time for questions. And uh, while we take questions, um, there's also some community onboarding 
uh, information on the screen there. And again, I'd really love it if anyone who has an interest in this stuff um, or new ideas for what we could do with this um, to, to join our community and, and as either an operator or as a developer. Um, by good fortune, our weekly IRC team meeting is directly after this call. So uh, we have a lot of questions, and if we're not able to get to them all, uh, please join us on, on Freenode in the Airship It channel, um, and we'll, we'll try to get more questions answered and or get you looped into our community. So with that, right. questions. Excellent. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump into those questions. So uh, first question, what is LCM? Ah, else, sorry, that's one of those, those buzzwords that, that some people are familiar with and others aren't. Um, LCM is life cycle management. And uh, you know, oftentimes uh, we, we've gotten asked, you know, why are you making another OpenStack installer? Um, that's, a, that's a very good question, um, but it has two, uh, two false assumptions in it. First off, it's not an OpenStack installer. It's, a, it's an infrastructure installer, and OpenStack just happens to be the first thing that we, uh, we plan to deploy via Helm Charts, um, and, uh, or we are deploying via Helm Charts, I should, I should say. Um, the, the other thing about it is that installation is just the first step, um, and the focus is really on the full lifecycle management of the infrastructure, and that includes monitoring, and that includes uh, upgrades and, and patches and things like that. So good question. All right. Evgeny, uh, is there a management count, a management console UI to all the things you demonstrated today? Um, there is no uh, there there is no UI available at the moment, and um, I'm not sure if there will be. So actually, like um, I want to cl clarify the things that I did today, like manually around this, all these comments. Actually, um, like. Specific companies uh, need to uh, to have some automations for that, and uh, probably to run some Jenkins and do automation. Like, if there is an update to some Git repositories where when your configuration was stored, and uh, there should be a trigger to uh, in, a, in a Jenkins job that will apply these changes on your environment. So actually, usually you are not supposed to run all these comments manually, and you should have some automation in place for that. So and okay, uh, so yeah, there are quite quite a few CI/CD tools that would allow you to do that, and um, usually they are specific for like uh, different companies choose different um, tools for that. And uh, I showed you like uh, as an example how you can do it using CLI, and you can automate it using your um, CI/CD tool. Okay, so I have, so I have given a couple that, things I'd like to go ahead, Nick. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to oh. say somebody else asked. Uh, will there be a dashboard developed for that? So I was going to say, given that, are there any plans for a dashboard? But go ahead and jump in. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Uh, so sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, I think that uh, is exactly what I was going to talk about. A, a couple points on that. First off, if anyone is interested in helping to develop a dashboard, that's uh, that's something we'd love to um, to work work with you on. You know, the sort of the initial operators that. Um, that were working on this didn't have a, a lot of need for a dashboard, and so it wasn't. Uh, it's not one of the first things that we got to, but it's definitely some of the feedback we've gotten in the community. So, um, yeah, we, we'd be very interested in adding one, like like Evgeny said. But the other the other point, uh, taking a step back, there may not be as much of a need for a dashboard as you think. Um, I, I was actually uh, chatting with one of our deployment engineers um, who's been uh, stamping out uh, 5G sites uh, for AT&T in production uh, using Airship. Uh, and he, you know, he, he was making the comment, um, having lived in the cloud deployment world for a long time, he's just amazed at how smoothly things go um, when doing production deployments. He doesn't have to keep an eye on things. He clicks the button and it works. Um, now granted, yes, problems do happen. This is not magic. But they, all the problems happen typically earlier on in the development process, right? When, when the developers are, are uh, and, the, and the deployment engineers and things like that, when we're, when we're developing the software, we catch, we're able to catch all of these issues um, earlier on and then fix them. Uh, before we get to the production deployments, so uh, we, you know, it's it'd be a good thing to add um, a monitoring or you know, more, a sort of a, a UI to to see what's going on, but um, it's 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 not super key 
perhaps uh, the way you might think it is. And the, the other thing also is we do have um, logging and monitoring user interfaces that can report out on um, you know, what's happening and, and what the load is and what, the, what, the, what events have been transpiring and that sort of thing. So there is a lot of, and we use the, the best in class um, kinds of uh, CNCF uh, user interfaces like, like Grafana, et cetera. So. <laughs> This, this is definitely a hot topic. Uh, I've just hit the third question on it. Somebody asked if there are there end-to-end -end visual tools like DAG for, for Apache Spark. So, I mean, I guess we answered that one. <laughs> the answer is no, not right now. But if you're interested, jump in. Okay. So uh, if you were wondering whether the community is interested in that, well, there's your answer. <laughs> so, there's, there's our answer. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah. So let's see. Let's uh, see what other questions we have here. Um, how does okay? So how does Airship eliminate patching of VMs, or does it? So the I where that where that statement came from um, was a world where the sort of the the control plane for your uh, for your deployment infrastructure lived on VMs, right? Um, basically, a lot of things, um, and, and this is coming from a particular background of, of a, you know, how one-way cloud engineering had been done or cloud deployments had been done where uh, you stand up virtual machines, you put your, uh, all your deployment tooling onto those virtual machines, and then, uh, and then you, uh, you use them. Uh, using Airship, uh, one of, our, one of our, our foundational principles was that we're going to run these, uh, all of these uh, deployment control plane tooling uh, inside Kubernetes on bare metal. And so that does, that does a couple things. One, uh, Kubernet uh, containers isolate these processes from one another to a degree, um, especially from a dependency management degree. So it's a lot easier to co-host a lot of these tools on the same hosts. And then the other part of that is that you can, you can really just shove more, uh, more of your tooling um, onto a smaller footprint. So uh, in adopting Airship, uh, some of the operators who had been doing things in a more traditional OpenStack deployment way were able to just do more with less uh, and, and have a, a smaller control plane um, driving, driving their deployments. And so the patching, circling back, the patching um, comment there uh, is about just having that many fewer virtual machines that you have to, you have to worry about. Um, now, if you're running OpenStack on top of Airship and you have virtual machines in there, then yes, you have to care for those virtual machines the same way um, that you have in the past. Airship doesn't, uh, doesn't tackle that problem. It just gets your OpenStack up and running uh, with uh, you know, less and faster. Right. So, so that, I think that kind of answers the next question, but I want to make sure that we make this really clear. So somebody asked, thanks for the presentation, does Airship support only container workloads or it also supports VM workloads such as classic OpenStack as well. So if I'm understanding this, and please correct me one way or the other, once you install OpenStack using Airship, even though it's all running on a containerized infrastructure, that OpenStack is just plain OpenStack. It's going to be running VMs, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's exactly right. Okay. So uh, the, the other thing I would add to that, too, is that um, one of the uh, one of the use cases uh, that we are anticipating for Airship down the road uh, and, and working towards um, is uh, containerized network functions and containerized workloads, right? And so Airship, Airship is not a replacement for OpenStack. Airship um, runs OpenStack and it's intended to be, you know, a um, you know, little, little biased here, but uh, the best way to, <laughs> to deploy and manage OpenStack, right? But at the same time, it's also intended to run other kinds of workloads uh, side by side with OpenStack. So it's, it's really just uh, we want to be able to declaratively we'll define our cloud infrastructure, um, whatever that may be, and not have to pick and choose. All right. Um, oh, we've got, we've got so many great questions. This is terrific. How can you use Airship to deploy an edge? What could you do? Could you describe a high-level architecture for this case? Sure, sure. Um, so I, I will uh, say that um, for edge deployment is not our first use case. Uh, for uh, for airship, right? Um, one one thing at a time, uh, but we are uh, we are working toward that. Uh, there's also a uh, an edge 
uh, oriented uh, community called the Acrano Project, um, which is working to use uh, to combine uh, airship and uh, and other kinds of um, you know technologies as sort of reference architectures. They call them blueprints uh, for different edge use cases. So um, you can do you can do some of that now. But uh, the big the biggest challenge is if you're stamping out you know thousands of edge sites, you want to be able to minimize um, the footprint that each site needs to take up, right? You, and so what we are working on uh, from an airship perspective to achieve that uh, is to, to minimize the, um, the footprint of our uh, airship control plane um, and then be very selective. We will be very selective about the additional services that we run side by side with that. And so using things like Argo and, um, and uh, things like, um, like MetalCube um, and Ironic um, are going to be ways to help um, drive uh, to be able to fit more infrastructure um, or more services in less physical infrastructure in support of edge, and then also potentially to be able to do more um, more management of the cluster remotely um, rather than in cluster, uh, which is the the way that air uh, sort of the sole mode that airship operates in today is that the uh, the control plane for airship is co-hosted within uh, the Kubernetes cluster that it manages. So we're we're looking into all of that now. Okay. Uh, will Airship take care of deployments of traffic and storage switches? Um, traffic storage. So, oh, I see. Good question. Um, Airship does not today do um, configuration of the switches themselves, um, but uh, that is an area that we've gotten um, feedback on. Uh, that there's a desire out there. Um, we've actually gotten feedback from uh, folks in the community that they they might be interested in um, working on that. Uh, so if if anyone has uh, you know sort of a desire to use Airship for um, for provisioning of uh, of um, and configuration of switches, uh, we'd we'd love to have those discussions. We have a weekly design call, and you can see the. Uh, the wiki um, on the screen there, and that that'll, that wiki will give you uh, the information for our weekly design call. Um, that's something we would definitely like uh, to achieve. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to. We're we're almost out of time, so I want to try and pick a good one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, what is the is there any roadmap to show the ONAP integration with Airship? Mm, that's uh, one way to answer that is that's another um, another uh, place to go look at the Acrano project. Um, part of the uh, part of the edge oriented integration and sort of reference architectures that they're working on um, is to incorporate ONAP management. Um, of the the network functions uh, that that would be running on top of Airship, so I, I would start there. Uh, we the Airship project itself um, doesn't uh, maintain a roadmap for that, though. Okay. All right. Last question: um, What is the difference between DevStack and Airship, or OpenStack, or OpenStack in a bottle? I think they meant Airship in a bottle. You want to take I mean, that I, I think the answer I'm would talking be, too much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, can, I can take this answer. So uh, this is an installation for like for this is an airship specific installation, and it runs a Kubernetes and on top of on top of Kubernetes. And this is an installation that is close to what airship looks like um, in the production. And DevStack, to my knowledge, is um, is a uh, is a set of uh, scripts that allows you to run um, OpenStack on your in your VM for for development purposes. So it uh, doesn't have, uh, as far as I remember, Kubernetes, and it doesn't really uh, it doesn't it doesn't really uh, uh, represent what what Airship is. Right. So so basically, Airship is. Kubernetes and other things potentially in production, and DevStack is uh, a not definitely not for production script for installing OpenStack. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our time. Bree, uh, let me hand it back to you so you can wrap up. Perfect. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, audience, please do not forget to give our team a rating for the live recording so that we can continually improve the quality of our webinars. 
And be sure to join us next Tuesday, April 23rd at 8 a.m. Pacific Time for an informative hour on vRouter solutions for Internet service providers with Six Wind. Thank you to all of our presenters, and thank you for our audience for joining us today. This concludes our webcast.